And we're live. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Closer Show. So this shit right here is just staying right here all year. Yeah. But this shouldn't be stressful at all. That's when I'm under just because he wouldn't give it to me. Jeans, private stock lead, but it's <laughs> let's go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have another cage match for you. This one is one of the ages. Those of you guys who got the newsletter, I'm sure that you guys are just foaming at the mouth, ready to see the action, the carnage of the battle that's going to happen tonight. Here's the format, folks. We've got RJ Bates, the king closer. He's sizing these guys up. He wanted a little piece of the action, so tonight he's going to be judging them, see if they're worthy opponents for him down the road. We've got Daryl and Scotty. RJ is going to do the uh, introductions for them. But as always, this is Closer's Cage Match. We're going to be going head-to-head, -head, call for call, to see who's the best, who's the top. May the best caller win. You, the audience, are going to get to vote, along with RJ doing the judging. It will be a good time. But without any further ado, may I introduce our judge for the night, Mr. RJ Bates III, King Closer. What's up, Liam? Uh, excited up? to be here. Um, this is this is fun because I'm just, I'm just having fun uh, with everything that we get to do with with the Speed the Lead show here, the Closer show, uh, me winning the Closer Olympics. It, it's funny. I never thought that you know after I won in dominant fashion that there would be so many people coming for my head. But our first competitor, Scotty. He sent me so many IG DMs. It was unbelievable. It was like everything I ever did on Instagram, he was responding saying, let me challenge you. Let me challenge you. So I responded back jokingly saying, who are you? Why would I compete against you? Go do something. And so he was like, all right, tell me what to do. So then I made another post and Daryl came and said, respectfully, I think I could beat you. And I was like, all right, well, respectfully, why don't you beat this Scotty dude that wants to beat me so bad? And then whoever wins between the two of y'all can compete against me. So this is how this came about. So it was all because of their utter confidence in themselves. So I expect to see epic closing skills for both Scotty and Daryl tonight. So let's let's get to it. Let's bring Scotty and Daryl in. They've certainly brought themselves a, a worthy opponent of each other. First, Scotty. <laughs> Listen, man, why are you uh, DMing RJ so much? Hey, man, I just want to—I want a piece of RJ. You know, that's all. I, I saw some videos. Uh, I just learned about the Closers Olympics maybe in the last uh, couple of weeks, and uh, yeah, you can't see any of the matches on YouTube. I think you have to pay for it. So, unfortunately, I don't really know how it works or anything, but I do know he's the reigning Closers King. So. I mean, shit. Everybody in my circle considers me the Closers King. So there you go. we'll see what he got. <laughs> let's do it I like it so what do you think the tail of the tape is going to be tonight between you and daryl uh you know i i uh i'm here in southern california i uh run a uh wholesaling and direct to seller company where we do a lot of wholesaling we do a lot of rental properties uh do some fix and flip and um i'm used to calling on ppc leads and seo leads uh, i started with outbound we still have some uh some uh, VAs that are doing some outbound dialing, but for the most part, me and my team were calling on, on uh, inbound leads. So this is kind of, you know, I'm used to this. This is what I do every single day. So I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little nervous just because this is the first time I've been kind of on stage, but at the end of the day, I'm just doing what I do every day. Love it. I like to hear it, man. Well, now we're going to bring in the other competitor tonight. We've got Daryl Ellison. How are you doing, my friend? What's up, Liam? What's up, RJ? I'm glad What's to be up, here. Bro? So how did you get involved in all this? It started off as a troll. <laughs> I was commented. So I watched the Closers Olympics, right? And the whole time I'm just thinking, you know, I could be up here. I can compete with these guys. I can win. And I kept saying it. And I, I like to feel like I manifested this. So I appreciate you, RJ, for, for putting this together. And I'm ready to rock, man. It's exciting. What do you think the Taylor Tape's going to be? You going to beat Scotty? Of course. This, I do this all day, every day. I was literally making calls since 10 o'clock today. So I've been doing this. I'm, it's just another day in the shop for me. So there you go. I'm ready How are the go. nerves? A um, little, little nervous. I, I don't go live that much. Um, I've been breaking out my Shelly's past few weeks going live on Instagram. And YouTube is just it's a little different. But 
you know, I feel like once I start making the calls, it, it's going to go away. You know, I'm here to solve problems. So there you go. That's all it is. No doubt. Well, we're going to get both you guys in here. You guys have the lead list and uh, RJ. Yeah, so here's how the rules are going to play out. It's going to play out just like it did when Aaron Bevins and myself went head to head. They have a lead list. These are all PPC leads from speed to lead. Uh, these leads have not been purchased by anyone else. So they're going to go call for call. Okay. So because Scotty is the one that started all of this mess, he's going to get to go second. So Daryl gets to go first as the challenger. Okay. So Daryl gets to go first. All right. He can pick any lead that he wants. He can base it off of location. He can base it off of motivation. Anything that's provided that's provided to you prior to you purchasing a lead from speed to lead, that's what he gets to choose his call off of, okay? Once he's picked that seller and he places that phone call, he can call him once or he can double or triple dial, but we really don't want to do that too often. Uh, if they don't answer, then it's Scotty's turn and vice versa. And they go call for call back and forth. And I'm going to be judging them on both the good and the bad calls. And at the end of it, then I'll decide who I think is the winner. I'm obviously going to weigh heavily on, on uh, the, the audience here and what you guys think. But hopefully uh, it's a close match. But I, I hope we all also have an obvious winner. Um, signed contracts are going to weigh extremely heavy as long as it's a good deal. We're not pulling any of that last second shot clock closers Olympics bullshit. OK, these are actual deals and you have to actually close them. So we want to make sure that there's actual exit strategy and it's going to be a profitable deal as well. So that being well, RJ, said, it is funny you say that. Didn't you have a last second shot clock uh, buzzer beater in the in the Olympics? I did, but it was a, <laughs> but it was a deal. So that's OK. So that's a as long as it's okay. a deal. It's as long okay. as it's a deal. <laughs> right. All right. Well, let's get them in here. All right. Who's Darryl. calling first? Daryl's up first. first. Yep. So I'll just pick any lead. Go to Michigan. So just so y'all know, there's currently 29 leads in the form for them to choose from. The number you have reached has been disconnected or is no longer in service. Let me see if I got it right. Yeah, make sure you got it right because they the leads have to be verified that their phone numbers work. Not all of these. That's so that's a large reason why some of these did not sell because they didn't complete the verification. Gotcha. Forward to it. That's tough. He got it to ring though. Yeah, I called the, the wrong number the first time. I mixed two numbers up. So let me double dial. Everybody, what Robin says is true. We actually have about a hundred people across all platforms, but you guys have got to be liking the video, sharing it. The more people we get in here, the more prize money's on the line. Oh, it's been forwarded to it. Double dial, no answer. All right, All right Scotty. Scotty. I'm calling uh, Andrew French in Mattis, uh, in in Elwood, Indiana. Nice. And Daryl, if you could mark your lead off on the sheet just in red. Yeah, I'm trying to do that. Not sure how to do that. Just click the uh, click the number by it, and then hit. Hi, this is Scott with Balsama Homes. I'm looking for Andrew, please. Andrew, what's up, brother? This is Scott Barons with Balsama Homes. How's it going? Good, thanks. Hey, buddy, I think you were on one of my websites recently with regards to a house you own in Elwood. Is that right? Correct. Cool, cool. Do you have a second? I actually, it caught my interest because in my short, uh, you know, in, in my time owning property in Indiana, I've actually done a deal in Elwood. And I know it's kind of a small city, uh, small area. So you, you probably know, know the house I did. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, um, I kind of went through everybody and the people that didn't get back to me quick enough, I went ahead and I've got it posted with a realtor now. So we're all good. 
Okay, got it. Is it uh you already have a signed contract? Is it is it about to be is it about to be listed yep. already? Oh, okay. Yeah, we're all good. So thank you very much. All right, man. Good luck to you. Happy New Year. Bye. Black. That's tough. That's tough. Yep. That hey, tough. I'm I'm trying to make this uh this red up clicking the button. It's, yeah, what uh what row is it? It's twenty six. Twenty six, what you do is you just click that twenty six, it'll highlight the whole thing, and then you hit that paint bucket and you hit red. Okay, got it. I don't have a paint bucket on here. Oh, I got to sign it. My bad, my top. bad. There we go. I'm good now. Okay. Perfect. And Daryl, you are up, my friend. All right. Let's go. I call Barry Snyder over here. Oh, man, Barry. Barry Snyder, what does he have going on? His property is in excellent condition. It's a two-bed, one-bath property. But he wants to sell ASAP in his own words. And there's no mortgage. Call has been forwarded to an audit. Come on, Barry. And he has a Maryland number. Call has been forwarded to an automated... Man. Try you can try FaceTime audioing him too. That usually can bypass the uh, FaceTime movie. audio. Let's do it. And this dude doesn't even have an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, you are up, my friend. Okay. All right. Let's see. Confucius says, Daryl just mirrored exactly what Scott did with announcing who he's calling. Maybe Daryl potentially looks up to Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial. Okay, I, I was trying uh, Jacob Gregg in Arkansas. Let me try this again. Or actually, uh, wait a minute. Who was I calling? Yeah, Jacob Gregg. 307-253. Early impressions. Your call cannot be complete. I'm uh I'm early impressed with Scotty's following here. I, I thought Daryl would have the sub two masses out, but but Scotty's got some trolls coming in. <laughs> yeah, Scotty got the trolls, but sub two is definitely in the house. <laughs> <laughs> sub two, you guys gotta let us know that you're here. You guys are all silent ninjas, though. It's kind of your guys' deal, isn't it? Uh, I got a wrong number on two dials, but I'm just going to quickly Google the address and see if I can find a phone number. Is that cool. allowed? Yeah, go for it. But Daryl's up. All right. Yeah, Daryl's oh, up. Okay, that's how that works for it. Greg Likens. Just so you all know, I won – against Aaron Bevins from leaving a voicemail in the first hour and getting a call back in the second hour. Wow. Hello, this is Greg from Likens. Hey, Greg, what's going on, man? This is Daryl. How are you? Uh, I'm Doing good. Who's this again? Uh, this is Daryl, man. We received a submission for your property over here on Croft Jones Road. Did I catch you at a bad time? Yeah, you did. Uh, you got like five minutes, man. It's, it's only going to take real quick. I just want to okay. see. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, so I have some notes here. It's not too, too detailed. Just wanted to uh, ask some questions, see if we're a good fit. Um, now, you got a property that you're selling on Croft Jones. I can't see, man. Is this vacant? Is this one you're living in or you have tenants in here? Uh, it's when I'm living in. It's when you're living in. Man, what's got you um what's got you moving? Pardon? What's got you ready to move? Um just don't um just miss Pennsylvania, that's all. You say you miss Pennsylvania? Yeah. That's funny. I'm actually from Pennsylvania. What part are you from? State College. State College. Got it. I'm from uh Reading, Pennsylvania. You ever heard of that? Yeah, I know what that's at. Yep, yep. That's a little far from State College, but um, still in Pennsylvania. Um, so I mean, if if somebody buys this house today, are you gonna still need some time to to find a place to move, or you already have that arranged? No, I can have that arranged. Um, but how much are we talking? 
Well, I, I'm just asking because a lot of times, I, you know, I'm buying a house right now and the seller's in there and he needs, you know, 60 days to move, which is fine. Uh-huh. We're, you know, we're not here to put anybody on the street. Um, uh-huh. Just trying to make sure, you know, you need you got some time to, to move forward. Got it. Um, so, man, tell me a bit about about the property. Um, I know you're living there, so I would assume it's in pretty decent shape. Well, I, I built it in 19. Um, really cheap to live in. Um, my electric bills are 80 or $90 a month or less. Mm-hmm. Um, probably 30 40 of that's to water my greenhouse. It's 30 or $40 of that because I'm on a well. Got it, got it. So are you going to be using the, the funds from this property to buy your new property or? Yes. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. Um. So like, tell me a little bit about the, the big ticket items, like the roof, windows, uh, HVAC system. I, I would assume you, you built it pretty, you said you built it in 19? So I'll, Yeah, 2019. Got it. Man, what's, what's stopping you from just listing this thing with the realtor? Um, I don't know. I guess I live in the boondocks here and I don't know if too many people. And last year I tried to do something like that and I didn't get no response. So, man, okay. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because they were really busy last year and so they didn't care. I don't know. Yeah. But anyhow, it's, uh, it's got four heat pump systems in the house. Um, they're all like at the time. I don't know if it's changed. But anyhow, they come from Japan and they're super, super duper high efficiency. Like oh, wow. They use no power. Um, so I got four zones in there. Um, if you look at Google Maps, it's just still a picture of it being built. Mm-hmm. Um, anyhow, it's uh, got uh, prefab walls for the basement. So I have a basement with a, basically a three-car garage. Uh, underneath the house, and the house is about 1,700 square foot on top with a three-car garage or 11 with, jeez, I can't remember if they're 11. They must be 12-foot ceilings with 10-foot garage doors. Man, it sounds like you really did your thing with this property. Are you sure you want to just leave it and go back to PA? What? Is that that's all you just missed Pennsylvania? Um, I had a business back there, and I guess I really want to go back and run my business. Got it. Um, so you didn't want to just like just maybe rent this one out and keep it keep it long term? I probably could do that because I live beside a world class motocross training facility. Nice. So those guys you see on TV, mm-hmm. they're they all train there. Nice, nice. You didn't want to um you know you want to get no lessons over there? You know, riding the bikes? I have bikes, but to be honest with you, I'm uh, moving down there. Mm-hmm. Um I've raced motorcycles for forty five years. Oh, I think wow. I just decided to retire here in the last three weeks man um, i don't really like people that have bikes now <laughs> i think i don't really uh, just condense in the thing uh, mm-hmm. i don't like professional athletes i think there's, there's a lot more to it than that yeah i just don't like it there and i used to be a professional athlete but that was in the 80s that i did professional motocross race and i did it all the way up until where i so just recently, and I just, um, my boy doesn't want to do it professionally anymore. And mm-hmm. actually, I got him a job in Iraq. He's not in the military. He's a contractor. Okay. And he's not around. And I just, uh, I just rather not, <clears throat> I'd rather not live there. If you, if you do Google Maps, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm actually, that's actually what I was about to ask you. Um, you must really live in the boondocks because I am trying to pull it up, pull the property up. Um, and I'm not uh-huh. seeing anything. It's 306 Croft Jones Road, right? Yeah, but I live uh, three quarters of a mile back of lane. So if you look there, you'll see a bunch of motocross tracks there. And then you have to go back um, another lane, but I don't think they have it marked on Google Maps. But mm-hmm. anyhow, um, it, there's one house that's kind of by me that's built, and uh, then my house is being built. So it's way like I hate that too. Yeah. I, I was a city boy, and I thought I wanted to live in the country. Got it. Cows and all this stuff. It just, I hate it, to be honest with you. So now, now you're getting back to the city. You miss the city, huh? 
I'm missing my business. <laughs> I got you. So, man, I'm going to, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you the truth, Greg. Um, so we buy properties, you know, a few different ways, right? Like one's, mm-hmm. one's cash. You know, that's typically when I'm going to come in and fix and flip. Um, now, it's going to be tough for me to, to – and being that you just built this house in 2019, I don't really see a fix and flip being an option for me. Um, I don't think it really makes sense. It seems like the house is in pretty good shape. Um, now, since there's no – it's really in the middle of nowhere, we actually bought a property just like this in the middle of nowhere. And it's crazy because I, I literally just told this story to another seller earlier today. Um, now there's a property that we bought in, uh, where was this? It was in Texas. It was in the middle of nowhere. Right. Uh Um, and I was saying the same thing. Like I can't find any comparable properties. There's nothing that I can see that it makes sense for me to, um, to, to get a number. Right. Um, and, and let me ask you this. I forgot to ask what, what were you looking to walk away with here? I have no idea. No idea. Yes, I don't. I want to just go back to Pennsylvania. Got it. So you don't know like what you would need to, to oh, buy another gosh. house. If you told me a hundred thousand dollars, I'd say to go pound sand because you can't. You can't. You can't even buy a lot in Charlotte for thousand mm-hmm. dollars. So I'm just telling you, I'm. It, it's. I don't know. And, and I paid for it myself. Mm-hmm. No, no mortgage, and I couldn't tell you how much I paid, paid for it. I just put the best of the best of the best of everything in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so and it was my retirement. I was going to retire there and ride dirt bikes all the time. And I got more land than what it has on there now. So I think I have now about nine acres. Oh, wow. Nine acres. That's yeah. What do you do with all that land, man? Cows. <laughs> I have a motocross track of my own. That's nice. So, so you're telling me that if I take this over, then I'll, I'll be also taking over a motocross uh, track and some cows. Uh, <laughs> probably not. I'll sell the cow. <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, yeah. So back back to that story. Then in Texas, we bought a house. Um, the seller's name was Aaron. Right. The house was really in the middle of nowhere, and it wasn't a nice house. Kind of similar to to this situation. And I told Aaron, like, man. I just cannot justify this this cash offer. So what we did was um, we we turned it into a rental property, right? And our our whole thing is we want to provide affordable housing to families who you know typically can't get uh, bank financing. You know they have bad credit for whatever the case may be. Um, so what we do is we agree to a price. I agreed to a price with Aaron, and I told him, hey, I can pay you some now and some later, right? So he was moving as well. We got him some money to move to his his next place. He got a new house. And now we're still making monthly payments to him every single month. So we're, we ultimately turned him into the bank. Um, <clears throat> is that something that may that may interest you or are you opposed to something like that? I'll be kind of opposed to that because I could rent it out right now to people from South Africa for like three grand a month. Mm-hmm. I figured that. <laughs> got it. I have a, it's a world-class motocross training facility. Mm-hmm. You go half a mile and you're right there and everything. So if you do the Google Maps, if you pull it up, you'll see probably 15. Now, you can't see 15 tracks that it's old, but there's 15 tracks there now. You probably see about 10. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, I mean, that's the case. Like I said, we do buy buy cash. We actually prefer to pay cash. But I'll tell you right now, man, um, being that I can't, you know, find any comparable properties, I'm not sure if it's going to be a number that you'll like. Um, okay. So, what is what is the least that you that you would take for this property? I haven't thought about it. You haven't thought about I it. I haven't thought about it. No. Got it. So. Um, that, that's so. Yeah. So, so you know what you don't want. Um, we know that. So, I mean, if I if I said something like, yeah, I, I honestly can't even. Pictures? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, you can do that. You can show me some pictures. Um, yeah, well, then you just uh, text me your email to this number and uh, what we're talking about real quick. Just your name, mm-hmm. about what we talked about, one sentence in your email. i get you some pictures tomorrow. Yeah, let's do it, man. That, that sounds like a plan, um, and then I can better evaluate it that way. Um, okay. And then we can jump on another call. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. 
Sounds good. I appreciate you. Uh-huh. See you, Greg. Bye. I could not comp that for shit, man. <clears throat> Sometimes it's just how they lie. Yeah. All good. All right, Scotty, All right. get one. Scotty, get up. Um, all right. Okay. I'm going to call Tim Nagel. Come on, Timmy boy. You got a landline. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. Six zero eight six six seven zero five five eight. It's not available. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey Tim, this is Scott Barons with Balsamo Homes. Giving you a call Wednesday, January fifth. It's a little after 2.30 Pacific time. Uh, I saw that you registered on one of our sites recently with one of your houses in West Salem that you're looking to get an offer on. I'm going to shoot you a text as well, and uh, hopefully we can get on a call. I am interested. I do buy in the area, and I would love to have a quick conversation with you. My direct line is 310-850-5958. And again, this is Scott Barons with Balsamo Homes at 310-850-5958. Thanks, Tim. Talk to you soon. Can I call him again, even though I left the message? Yeah, you can. Um, another thing, go ahead. You can call him. But just one of the days with the voicemails, if yeah. he does call you back and the other person's on the phone, you have to keep yourself muted until the other person's done with their phone call. And yeah. then I'll judge you based off of what I hear. Okay. Or maybe I could just hang, not answer or just text him and tell him I'll call him right back or something. No, definitely answer. Oh, answer. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes, All right. Answer. You got to love you. Yeah. Let me try again. So Art, and that's how RJ got the winning edge last week. He uh, yeah. came out of nowhere, hopped off a call with Aaron. RJ was in the middle of it, locked it up. Oh, wow. The contract signed. Word. And he just moved it for 200 grand assignment fee. No way. <laughs> We're, we are trying for a six-figure assignment fee. Hey, Tim. Yeah. What's up, man? Scott Barron's with Balsamo Homes. How are you? Hey, man, I saw that you registered on one of our sites recently on this property in West Salem. Is that right? Yeah, I just talked to somebody about that. Okay. Do you have a, do you have a second to talk to me? Well, I just said I was just seeing what the value of it would be. So okay. Did, did you get, did you get that? Much? What's that? I got a value from him. What are you going to tell me? What are you <laughs> tell me? It sounds like you've been there for 30 plus years. Is that right? Do you live there? Yep. Okay. Where are you trying to go? That's a long time, man. Where are you trying to go? I don't know yet. I'm just looking for a price. Okay. You're looking for a price. Okay. Do you own it outright? Do you have a mortgage? Talk to me about that. I need some. I, 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 owe, I owe a little bit. Okay. Not much. Okay. And I'm assuming you're up to date on that and, and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I mean, I. I would be happy to I'd be happy to talk to you and try to come up with a value, but forgive me, I didn't I didn't do my homework before I got you on the phone. I wanted to make sure you know you're a real person. Sometimes I get some weird people on my website, but if you have a minute to talk, I can ask you a couple questions and we can see if we can come up with a value. I am a serious buyer. Okay. Are you a serious seller? If the price is right. I don't need to tell it. I'm just wondering what it was worth. Okay. Are you, are you just wondering that because you've owned the house yeah. for 30 plus years and you're just trying to get a value on your house? Or are you wondering because no, you... We're, we're thinking about downsizing and moving to the country. And I got a farm and moving down there. Oh, okay. So you already have a place to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
All right. Well, let's talk. I mean, realistically, if we came to a deal, how fast do you want to get it? How, how fast do you want to move? So if it's enough that I can just say do my job and just go down there and we'll see. So see you're you're, you're talking about retiring and moving, is that right? Yep. Yep. Okay. So there's got there's got to be a number in your mind that would make you comfortable to make that leap in your in, in this time in your life. Obviously, that's a big move. You're not just moving, you're, you know, retiring. So so where do I need to be? Above 160. 160. Is, do, do you mind me asking how you came up with that number? I mean, listen, I, I have not run my comps. I haven't even opened up my computer to look at your property. I just wanted to call you and see if you're a real person, have a conversation before I do my homework. How did you come up with that number? We just totally remodeled it besides one little section of it uh, within the last five years. It's all new electric, uh, new furnace. Steel roof, um, it's one level, three bedroom, but the, the house next to us sold for 210. So, oh, wow, that's a two story. Is that's that a two story? And the one on the other side was a piece of shit and junk, but that sold for 105,000. Yeah, I think I saw that one. That one sold just a couple months ago for 105, right? I mean, did you walk yeah. that property? Yeah. I know what the property is. The house is junk. I've been in, the, in that house numerous times. And it's a total gut job. <laughs> it, it was right next to you. Did you know the people that owned it too or what? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I knew the people that owned it. They said they couldn't believe it. <laughs> they couldn't believe that somebody paid that much for it. Oh, so they were surprised that they got 105. Yeah. Were, were, you, were you surprised that they got 105? Yeah. Yeah, they told us ours would probably go over two hundred. Do um, do I hear do I hear Tammy in the background? Yes, you do. What's going on, Tammy? Can she hear me? I don't know. She's just putting her two cents in. Okay. Well, listen, guys. This is the exact type of property, especially if it's in good condition, that I would add to my rental portfolio. Do you have any yeah. idea what this property could rent for on a month by month basis? My my guess would be probably fifteen to seventeen hundred a month. Okay, fifteen to seventeen. Yeah. Okay. Do you uh, go ahead? Three bedroom with a detached garage. And how many bathrooms? One. And you said the next door neighbor on the other side sold for two ten. Is that right? That's what I heard. That was two ten. I didn't. I couldn't confirm that. I heard from the owner that sold it. Okay. She said. Okay. Um, so obviously I am an investor. Um, you know, I, this is how I make my money. I, I don't, I don't know how to say it, you know, and, you know, put a smile on your face, but this is ultimately how uh, we're in business. You know, I find deals off market and uh, I try to make, uh, try to make two parties happy. You know, uh, there's a couple of different ways that I can make this side happy. You know, sometimes we do some fix and flip. Um, doesn't sound like that would be a good candidate since your house is already fixed up though. So, you know, what, the way that I'm thinking is, is keep it as a rental and it sounds like it's a good area. It sounds like it can get a decent amount per month. Um, you know, what do you know about the area? Is it a good school district or I guess sell me on keeping it as a rental? <laughs> really good school district. Okay. Um, it's, it's an open access. It's not boxy, and it's set up that it's handicap accessible, so it's made up so it's for young people or old people. Okay, fair enough. We have we, we put we put all thirty six in stores in. Oh, okay. And it's got a it's got a it's got a vinyl fenced in backyard. Who who did the work? Was it uh, was it professionally done, or is it um, you know talk to me about that? The, the fencing or the interior? Just everything, combination. The, the in, interior, the whole house inside was professionally done. I put the fence up, so yeah, it was professionally done. So, <laughs> and, okay. And <laughs> <laughs> so what what do you do for work that you're going to be retiring from soon? Yeah. It's 
got a huge bathroom. Um, I'm I'm a plant manager at a screen printing place. Okay. Um, is that local in town near the house in West Salem? No, it's in Holman. Holman, I drive. Oh, okay. I drive there. Okay. Well, where in the country are you trying to go? Like, you know, hour away, two hours away? Where's your farm? Oh, my farm's in Crawford County. Okay. About an hour, 15 minutes away. So I guess this is my question. I know you were on my website. You know, you obviously that shows some level of motivation that you guys, you know, you know, want, want to sell. But provided we can actually come to terms on a deal, can you guys realistically give me a time frame as to when you guys would be happy to move out or, or when you guys can move out? Because, you know, that, that's going to be uh, a big factor in, in our decision here, I would think. I need some numbers, at least a, a ballpark number. Well, you gave you gave me one sixty five, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't know if I can pay one sixty five. I think that that uh, I think that sounds like the number you would probably get if you put it on the open market, um, based on what you're telling me about the neighbor. The neighbor? Did you say the neighbor's house was bigger than yours? Uh, the one that got two ten was a, is a two story. Yeah, and you're a single story, right? Right, I'm single story. Theirs is a really narrow, tall house, where mine's wider. So here, here's here's where we're at. I can pay cash, but as an investor, I need an even better deal if I'm paying cash, just because I need to see a clear path to repayment. Whether I'm going to fix and flip it, or in this case, I'm going to keep it as a rental. You know, the the the, the clear path to repayment there is either I'm getting enough cash flow on a monthly basis. Or, you know, I can refinance the property in several years and, and get my money out that way. So what, what I'm getting at here is, is this. If I think that if you put it on the open market, you're going to walk away, you know, probably, you know, if you, if you were lucky enough to sell it for 165, you know, you're probably going to walk away with closer to like 145, 140, right? After everything's paid, real estate commissions, 3% per side, title and escrow. I mean, that's another one and a half to 2%. So I would think you're probably walking away in the 140 range. Does that sound about right? I don't know. This is a hot market. Places go up places sell here fast. Oh, is that right? Once they, once they go on the market, like the one over there, yeah, that was actually listed for ninety two, and, and they had they had bidding wars on it up to the one hundred five. Wow. They had this market on my son's house, and he had it listed at seventy four, and it went for a hundred. Wow. Okay. So. So I, I, I totally get that. I mean, I'm assuming the house probably is not market ready, though. Is that right? I mean, if the house was empty, would it be literally ready to put on the market, guys? Or does, does there is there some deferred maintenance? Or talk to me about that. Um, Matt, I might have a little bit in that one room to do some, but that would probably be about a four hour job. Yeah, small room that goes between. I don't know if you have pictures of the house. Do you? Can you? Can you send me some pictures? Can Tammy send me some uh, a text message with some pictures? Can you do that? Because you know, one one sixty five. Let me ask you this: do, Are you? What are you most motivated by? Do you want to put the cash in the bank? Because I mean, you you've had this property for. 30 to 50 years, I would assume if you take a big lump sum, you're, there's going to be a big tax obligation there. Is that something you've thought about with the depreciation and just the tax that you're going to have to pay? Have you guys thought about that? Oh, we thought about it. We thought about it. Well, one, one way I can, we could potentially, go ahead, Cammy. That doesn't mean just because you're talking all this, this year to us now, we're gonna just drop and give it to you. <laughs> well, what, what what would it take? What would it take then, Tammy? What would it take to make you happy to want to work with me then? Because you know that's what I'm all about. 
I want you to want to work with us, obviously. Yeah. What would it take? I don't know. We, we were just trying to get some numbers and see and, and uh, then, then plan from there. <laughs> when, when I sent you that, uh, when I sent you that text just now, did it come through to you? You sent me, you sent me a text? You sent me a text? Yeah, I did. Uh, you put hi, Tim? Yes, that was me. Okay. Well, wait a minute. Tammy, what were you just saying about the real estate agent? I'll let you go. We'll, we'll talk about this a little bit. Maybe take some pictures and send to you. Okay. Well, guys, I am interested. I do want to talk to you again. When can I call you back? After I send pictures. Okay, I'll okay. I'll look forward to them. Thanks, guys. Bye. Oh boy, that was brutal, guys. Absolutely brutal. That's tough. That's tough. Daryl's up. Yep. Daryl is up. Sarah Khan, number one uh, lead on the list. Number Here. one lead, number one closing, baby. That's what we got. Oh, let's go. <laughs> My guy, Amir. <laughs> Dude, Confucius is really out here making some enemies. Hello. Hey, Amir. What's going on, man? This is Daryl. How are you? Daryl from here. Daryl from uh, Maryland. I'm giving you a call. Your, your property just came across my desk, uh, the one on Vance Lane. You still selling this one? On Vance Lane? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is this for the cash offer thing? Yeah, yeah. We see we received your submission on our site. Um, yeah, but I noticed the cash offers are. I think they're more focused on beaten down properties mm -hmm. that required upgrades or something. Mine is a brand new one, so I don't think. Got it. Sense. Well, I mean, I buy properties a few different ways. Um, what would you mind uh, catching me up to speed, man? What what's got you? I see you just bought this a year ago. Why why are you selling so soon? I just want to sell. However, I mean, it's it's just not relevant. Just waste time because your mm -hmm. model is not supportive of this. Got it. Well, you cash offer everything. I know what, what your model is. Well, Amir, uh, not to cut you off, man, but I'm not a one trick pony like these other guys. Um, I buy a few different ways, like I said. Um, if I'm buying cash, it's primarily to fix and flip, right? This doesn't yeah. seem like it's going to be a fix and flip opportunity. It seems like a pretty new no, build. No. Um, yeah. So. Typically, in these situations, I like to add to my rental portfolio. Um, and I, I do that in a few different ways. So, I mean, if I can get some information from you, man, this is only going to take about five minutes. I can tell you the options and I can tell you how we can how we can get you the most for this property. Yeah. Uh, if it's a recommendation for a realtor or something, I already have. No. Nah. Uh, but if, if you want to invest for rental, yeah, go ahead. Got it. So, I mean, what that that is a good point. Why? Um, what did stop you from just listing it with a realtor? I already have one. I don't need more. Okay, got it. So you're not yeah. you're you're gonna just list it with them, um, if you don't sell it to. Yeah, I have my. The only reason I signed up was for the cash offer, but I realized that it doesn't mention in your ads, but you are looking for fixing up and then uh, flipping it. Mm -hmm. And so that's not my property. Yeah, yeah, that and that I already know that wouldn't work here, right? So, okay. um, <clears throat> tell me, are you are you currently living in this property, or is this like a? Yes. Okay, got it. So if we were to buy this, you're going to need uh, some time to move um, or you already yeah. have that figured out. Sure. I mean, whenever I sell, then yeah, I'll move. Got it. Um, so, I mean, I, I guess I'm just curious, man. You you just bought this in January. Um, is this is this a new build? Yeah, it's a new build. What do you like? Not like the, the neighborhood or something or what? what? No, no, nothing. I just want to uh, change. Got it. Um. So I mean, uh, what what were you what were you looking to walk away with here? Sorry, what were you what looking to sell this price? for? Yeah, well, it's, it'll be so exactly equal to what the comparable property, um, the second home from my home sold for. I think sold for five twenty five, which effectively is three hundred and twelve dollars a square foot. Mm -hmm. So five twenty five is your is your magic number. Um, so if somebody no, gives you. 312. I'm sorry. No, it's three twelve. Three per square foot. Three twelve per square foot. Yeah, that property was sixteen 
hundred and I forgot sixteen seventy, I think, or sixteen forty, something like that. It's Got good. it. So, but the so first you're. Number was so three twelve per square foot. That's six hundred forty thousand dollars. That that's what you're looking to walk yeah. away with. That's my magic target number. I'm looking at. Yes. Got it. Um. So I mean, man, what? Both the properties are built by the same builder, same mm -hmm. age, same neighborhoods, literally next to me. Mm -hmm. One house. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. So, I mean, that is a pretty penny, man. What? Let me ask you this: What happens if nobody comes up to six forty? What What's the plan? That's okay. I mean. No hurry. So you just you'll just keep it and you'll continue to live there? Yeah, well, next year maybe. Yeah. Got it, man. Um Yeah, it seems like it seems like if you don't sell this house in like another year or two, it's not really gonna matter to you that much. Huh. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I can I can tell you what what we can do to come up to six forty. Not sure if that's gonna um make sense to you because look if I'm if I'm paying cash, you already know. Um I'm sure you already got it. People are probably coming in around like probably what you bought it for, or maybe less. Um is that is that the case? That's not true. Where have the offers been coming in at? Yeah. I mean, it's none of your business. Just tell me what you can do. Got it. I don't want to waste time. Basically. Got it. Yeah, I, I'm not trying to waste time either. So I, I will just get to the yeah. get to the chase. Um, so, I mean, the only way I can come up to 640 is if you allow me to pay some now and some later. So it's not a cash offer? No, not a cash offer. You said you didn't want a cash offer, man. No, I didn't say that. I just said I don't want, I don't think your cash offer model suits my type of properties. Right. Yeah, yeah. So the only way that me or any other investor would probably make sense of this is if you know I can come in, I can give you a, a, a down payment to get you moving, and then I can give you monthly payments every single month until I pay you off. Yeah, no, that won't work. Yeah, I figured that, man. That um, what? So I, I honestly think you might as well just just go with your realtor. Um, doesn't yeah. seem like we'll we'll be a good fit here. That's fine. Thank you for the advice. Yeah, I appreciate you, man. All right. Have a good one. All right, Amir. Have a good one. Bye. Disqualify. Get him out of there. You did a good job keeping him on. Hello. Hi, Lola, please. Yeah. Oh, hi, Lola. This is Scott with Balsamo Homes. How's it going? Good. You were on one of our websites recently about this property on 310 Hammond Street. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, call him right back. I mean, let's fucking do it. Keep calling him, FaceTime until he answers again. Hey, what's up, guys? Good to see everybody. Yeah, okay. Daryl, you're up, man. L Lola says she doesn't like guys named Scott. Got What's it. up with Lola though? She she entered that shit. <clears throat> she did. Call him Chris. That might still be. She might understand who's calling now. Cause she probably has a bunch of people hit her up. But when you tell her, tell her you're from Cash Offer Option. They usually respond really well to that brand. If you've watched okay. the show, you 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 might have noticed that. I haven't, but thanks. Hello, this is Christopher Badio. I'm around, but I'm going to my phone at the moment. <laughs> Gene, you got some music, bro. Oh, yeah, shit. hey, your music, mute yourself, bro. Hello, this is Christopher Badio. I'm around, but away from my phone at the moment. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks and have a great day. Hey, Christopher, this is Daryl. Um, my team just received your submission for your property over here on Lynn Drive. Give me a call back, man. 484 769 3951. All right. Bye. Hey, just uh, another point here on the competition. Just because someone else calls a lead doesn't mean you can't call the same lead. Okay. So you you can you know, like for example, you think the other one dropped the ball, you can call that same lead back 
and uh, win the competition that way. Dude, yeah. If I mean, honestly, if you if you manage to get like a verbal contract off of something like that, that is just like, I don't know, man. That's like opening their bedroom door and pissing on their bed right there. Right. <laughs> and and to all the people that are watching that want to know how they can get on the show, reach out to me, send me a DM, tell me why you deserve to be on the show. And then I'll decide if you can challenge someone else to challenge me. Okay. You got to tell me these, these boys right here, they told me why they deserve to be on here. And it's very evident why they're on here. They're both showcasing their skills. Another thing in the chat, listen, Sorry, I missed your call. Please try again. they are taking time out of their day to educate you. Okay. So let's show some respect in the comments. It is not easy to get up here and talk to sellers live in front of, 200 people. All right. I just tried Jeff Vintage and it went to voicemail. I'm going to try again. What, what happened here? Uh, that I was showing. Sorry, I missed your call. Please try again. Shit. Try FaceTiming. It's on me or Scotty still up? I'm going to try the FaceTime audio, see if that works. Cool. Uh. Hello? Hi, I'm looking for Jeff, please. This is his wife. May I ask who's speaking? This is Scott Barons with Balsama Homes. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good, good. Here, you're, you're showing yourself. I'm going to show myself. Okay, that'd be fine. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. My name is Scott Barons. I'm with Balsama Homes. I'm sorry to call you and bug you. It, sound, it looks like you're comfy on the couch. Are you watching a movie or something? No, I was actually talking to my uh, aunt in Chicago area, and I'm just kind of hanging out and jamming. Okay. Jeff should get here in about 30 minutes from work. Okay. Well, here shortly so well i don't want to take too much of your time thank you so much for taking the time though to speak with me the reason why i'm calling and bugging you is because it looks like jeff was on our website recently about a property you guys own in indiana is that right yes yeah well, I, I was. oh that was you so you're the person i'm looking for anyway Oh, okay. That's so okay. So I see the name Jeff Vintage. So you must have put your husband's name then. Yeah, I like because he's the one that makes the money and all that good <laughs> stuff. So I just like to put his number, I mean, his name and everything because he's the boss guy. Absolutely. I understand that. That was nice of you. So, question for you Are you guys trying to sell the house so that you can start renting? Is that what I read? We would like to sell this house. He got offered a job in South Carolina. Okay. He's on the he's on the you know on the fence there trying to figure out what he wants to do there. Either way, we gotta sell the house. Okay. They want if it starts there, and if he accepts that, they want him to start in February February first. Okay. So, but if that don't work out, he's already got a job here, and he's had for a while. And we still have to sell the house because um, in early, like last June, his both of his parents passed away. Oh, no. And we ended up getting the house. We just found out a couple months ago. Oh, wow. But it's not available right now because his brother is building a house and needed a place to stay while they finished building the house. So... Since we are in our home, we told them to go ahead and stay in that home until he got his house built. But when we sell, when he's done, he's moving into their house. Okay. The new house. And then that house will be empty for us to move into it. Okay. And where did he... We need to get rid of this house. Okay. Well, I think you're talking to the right guy. I own quite a few rental properties in Indiana. And I, yeah, and actually I just closed on my first rental property in Louisville today. So I, okay, two hours from here. that's what I'm saying. I'm, it's pretty yeah. close to you and, you know, I'm kind of familiar with the area. 
So as long as it kind of makes sense for me to keep it as a rental, I don't see why there would be no, there would be no reason why we can't work together. I mean, you're already seeing me, I'm seeing you. It seems like a match made in heaven. Tell me what, for, t talk to me about the house first that I'm buying. So tell me a little bit about it. You know, how many beds, baths. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm off mental page here. You're wanting, you're in, you're, you buy, you would buy like our house. Yes, yes. You want to sell your house, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, I just misunderstood what you were saying. And I was like, okay, where's rental going in on this place? But okay. All right. This is a quarter of an acre in a prime subdivision in our town. Okay. We we lived in the house uptown for 20 years. Both girls are both of our daughters moved on in life. We did not need a five bedroom two bath home. Jeff and I did not. Okay. Uh, so we sold it and bought this place here, and it uh, it was a um. Three bedroom, two bath ranch. Okay. It was disgusting. It was just full of, um, let's see, what was it? Uh, raccoons lived in the ceiling. Wow. And it just, they just pooped and peed everywhere. It just disgusting. And uh, crawl space was full of mold. So we ended up talking to professionals about the mold and stuff and everything else. And it was not a good idea remodel it so we uh paid someone to tear it down clean up the spot where it was and we put a 2016 sectional home on it that was on on the lot had not been lived in yet oh wow we wants to live in it um we did that in 2019 well then it's three bedroom two bath gorgeous home um i had a realtor look at it today and yesterday and they both uh, uh, put it at 190,000. Okay. For uh, both of them said the same thing. Um so we would start at 190,000 is what they were thinking. Okay. Um it's gorgeous, it's nice, it's clean, it's nothing wrong with it. Um it's permanent foundation with a block. Yep. Uh, block foundation. Uh, set up brand new septic system before we moved in. That was thirty thousand. Um, we owe ninety seven on it. Okay. We need to get that paid off to get it to get it cleared up. Um, but that's basically what I'm thinking. So, are do you, you mentioned you mentioned having to clear it off? Um, is are you trying to go buy another house and qualify for another mortgage? Is that what you're trying to do? Got it. And his work that he's going to work for, if he accepts it, will pay the first five, four or five months of whatever uh, we end up getting. Got it. Would would they? Okay, so it sounds like you guys are going to go rent for a while, at least a year or two, though. Is that right? I, I think at least a year until we figure out what we're doing, and you know, because we we'd love to buy. We found a place down there that we would like to buy, but do we buy and then he hates the place and the job and everything and want to come, you know, because we're going to come back to his parents' house to have as our second home. Okay. And it's almost paid for, so we're going to just do that. Okay. Yeah, because I thought you were going to move into that house, so you're not, you're not going to, you're going to use that as a second home then? Yes. Okay. Yes. Got it. Do you have any idea? You say that the area is nice. Uh, if you know for rentals, you know, do you have any idea what your house could rent for? Any clue whatsoever? I feel honestly no. I've never checked out the rentals in our town. Uh, I, I've never paid attention to what's available for rentals. I know there's some, but I don't. There could be more than I know. Okay, and. Is the school district good? I mean, would it be a reason? 
Say that again. Amazing. Okay, good. And what, what about the, uh, the mortgage? How much is your payment every month? 1100 even. Okay. So I'm just thinking, you know, especially if you're going to go rent for a year or maybe even a little bit longer, one of the ways that I can pay a little bit more for the house is if I essentially make you the bank, if that makes sense. Well, it probably doesn't make sense. <laughs> well, I just don't know. Well, first of all, we're talking about two factors here. So you're you're saying that you think the house is worth 190,000, but you owe about 97. So yeah. th that leaves like another 90,000 in question, right? Yes, and we were going to pay a lot, like pay our two cars off, pay some bills, like doctor bills, you know, fix up our credit with my paying bills. Got it. Uh, and then put the rest away for another place or rental or something and put some in so uh, retirement. Got and it. we're going to up the money, the leftover. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out how I can make this work because obviously you've spoken to two agents in the last two days and they've told you their opinion of 190 thousand. Have they talked to you about what they're going to charge you for you know listing the property and whatnot? Because like the market is like what three percent per side. Yes. Okay. So he said the one girl um, and I really liked her. Uh, she I think I can't remember and I did not write it down. I was always taking notes. But I think she said six percent. I don't know. Yeah, because you, that that's about right. And then you end up paying another couple of percent, um, you know, in title and escrow, and you end up you end up walking away with like maybe a little over ninety percent of whatever you sold it for. So okay. a couple of things we can offer, you know, um, when I said make you the bank earlier, what I meant by that is potentially purchasing the house by taking over the mortgage, the $1,100 per month. It sounds like, and again, I haven't done my research either, but I could potentially get more than $1,100 a month in rent. So if I take over your mortgage uh, and you save me from coming to escrow with $97,000 because you have a perfectly good mortgage in place with probably a reasonable interest rate, I could take that over. And in theory, I could make more money in rent or you know, then then your mortgages and create a positive cash flow situation. Do you follow? Yes. Okay. So the reason why that's important is because it allows me as an investor to pay a little bit closer to the retail for your property. You see, I'm an investor. I'm not. I'm not one of those. Uh, you have. I don't know how to put this politely or nicely, but the only way I really make money is by finding deals. If that makes sense. So. Yeah. If I was, uh, you know, if I was out there uh, paying retail for properties, quite frankly, I wouldn't be talking to you. I would be on Zillow and, you know, going down the list and picking the ones that me and my wife like the best and we would be putting in our offers. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, so I need to, I need to get some sort of deal. You, you see what I'm saying? Like when you were on, when you were doing that Google search, like these cash buyers that you're looking for, like we, yeah, yeah we need to get some sort of deal. Does that make sense? I do. Well, that, that is, that is overwhelmingly the response that I get when I kind of drop a bomb like that, uh, on the first call. And I don't expect you to understand or be all into it, you know, on the first call, quite frankly, when we do something creative like this, it involves a lot of trust on both sides. You have to trust me. I have to trust you because when you do a normal sale, you know, we close escrow and then you never hear from me again, generally. But when we do a, a transaction like this, you know, your mortgage is going to stay in place. I'm going to be making payments on your behalf, which of course is going to boost your credit. You had mentioned something about, uh, you know, having, uh, you know, you're having credit issues. So this would definitely help. Good. I mean, pretty bad. We were both in the 500s, the mid 500s. So, so yeah, I mean, I have experience with that. My wife, uh, she had bad credit several years ago from some health bills that she never paid. You know, she was... She, you know, it, we were young and she had, you know, she went to the hospital for something and sent us like a $5,000 bill and it just went to collections and it ruined her credit. Right. Um, yeah. So we, we dealt with that. I think she was at like 560 or 570 and we've spent years uh, boosting her credit back up. But one of the things obviously that gets your credit, uh, you know, you know, at least uh, going in the correct direction is making timely payments, you know, with your creditors. 
So one of the reasons, one of the selling points, if you will, for this type of transaction is that, of course, I will be making timely payments, which will boost your credit. Um, because you're looking to cash out all of your equity, like the 90,000 additional, I don't, I don't know if this would work. I do have this other strategy that we deploy sometimes where we can actually help you list the property for sale by owner without paying those crazy fees. Oh, wow. Okay. And, and showing it ourselves type of thing. So that's where my sellers, when I, when I bring this up, that's where they get scared. They're like, oh, I don't want to do it myself. I don't want to have to you know, meet anybody or show it. We will handle all of that. I told you that I have rentals in the area. You know, I have this new rental in Louisville. So I've just, I vetted a whole team and now I have a team nearby. I'm sure I can add someone, uh, you know, closer to you even, and we can handle it all for you. Quite literally, we will list it for you, uh, you know, for sale by owner. It'll be on Zillow. It'll be on Redfin. It'll be on everything. And when the buyers call, they'll deal with me or someone on my team. We will represent you. Uh, no, we are not, uh, we're not real, you know, we're not licensed agents, but yeah. that's, that's the only way we're able to kind of do this. If that makes sense, we're just kind of helping you out as though someone in your corner was like, Hey, I'll help you list it for sale by owner so that you don't have to pay those crazy fees. Yes. Yes. Um, sounds at all. It sounds good, but what I'll probably have to have you do is talk to Jeff too. He um, should be almost home. <laughs> yeah. Only because he don't like to be, because I will bombard him and go, hey, this is the guy that looks, you know, show him the phone. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's in a good mood or not. Okay. I, I hear you. Long day at work. Well, listen, listen, I am actually, I'm very interested in this, seriously. And I want you to know, you might be asking yourself like, well, what's in it for you? And <laughs> you're right. You know, we don't work for free. We are going to have some sort of fee, but that's going to pay, be paid on the buyer's side, okay? Oh. And you're still going to get the number you're looking for, which is, which is going to be fair market value. When you call these guys on Google, myself included, uh -huh. we, we have to see a clear path to making a profit. So we're always, when, when we give an offer, it's always, you know, baking in some sort of profit. But if we do this strategy, you're going to be getting an end buyer that wants to move their family into your home. And those end buyers, they always pay more. They pay retail. They pay fair market value. So whatever offers we get, you can't really argue with that. Of course, you don't have to accept it, but that is going to be the fair market, if that makes sense. Yes. And, okay, so do you think the 190 is the fair market, the way that everything's high right now? Good question. I have to run my comps with my team. In fact, I wanted to talk to you first before I did that because I get a lot of, you know, funny submissions on our website sometimes. So I, I wanted to make sure that you are a real person. You actually own the house. You want to sell the house and you bet your butt that I'm going to work on this right now with my team. And okay. when can we talk again? Um, let, can you send me a text of who you are and what you, your business is? So I know what to tell Jeff. Yes. I will send you a, uh, a picture of my business card right now. Okay? okay. And you can even like take a screenshot with your phone so you can show him me or something. Okay. <laughs> and, um, oh, <laughs> um, do me a, do me a favor though. Can you do me a favor though? Yeah. Can you save my number on your phone? Yes, I will. Okay. My name is Scott. My name is Scott. And, okay. and I'll text you my name, my full name and my, and my business card. And let, let's, let's make this happen. I mean, as much as I would like to buy your property for a massive discount off of 190, I just don't see that happening for one. Your property is in too good of condition for two. And I see this as a good opportunity for us to list it for sale by owner for you and get you a fair market and more money in your pocket than you would if you were to work with a real estate agent. <laughs> That's right. Whatever. I mean, it's not going to be six thousand dollars. It's going to be the six percent, whatever it is, of the sales price. But I mean, yeah. Yeah, and again, we are going to make something. I don't know what it's going to be exactly, uh -huh. but, but I can tell you, it's not going to be six percent. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, 
either, you know, that sounds better than doing six percent. So to me, um, but Jeff will have to just like talk to you. Totally fine. Ask all kinds of questions. Well. So, if, if one of the questions he asks is how do we get started, tell him that the next step is we have to come up with a price that we are going to list it for. And then I need to have someone come take professional pictures of the house. Okay. Absolutely. And just so you know, we call this a novation agreement. Okay. So uh, novation agreement and We'll send you all the paperwork needed to, to get started if you and Jeff, of course, want to continue this and work with me and my team. And you are in good hands. I assure you that, okay? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Save my name and number. I'm going to text you my business card, and then I'll call you tomorrow. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Here, have a good evening. You too. Bye. Bye. FaceTime King. That's the first time we think we've gotten a uh, live face. No, no. I did a live FaceTime. I love that. I what love about that. Novation agreements? Is that the first pitch on Novations on the show? No, we had uh, Corey Geary on. No, uh, we had Corey Geary on there, actually. <laughs> Let's go. With uh, Sonia. All right. But real on. quick, uh, I think we're like at the halfway point. So I just want to give some notes before we get too far in this and also let Scotty and Daryl kind of know my, my feedback so far. Um, so I'm trying to keep a pretty simple scoring system on this. Um, I'm giving a check mark if I thought it was a good call and an X if I thought it was a bad call. Um, I have both Scotty and Daryl having two good calls. Um, I have Scotty having two bad calls. Um, I thought the first one that he got, the one that was listed with the realtor, I thought he should have pushed harder and, and said something similar to what I said last week, which was like, you know, you're looking for a buyer. That's all the realtor is going to do is go find a buyer. Like, let's have a conversation. I might still want to buy your property. Um, the the other one he got hung up on, it was just kind of, you know, it wasn't his fault, but it was just, it was a bad phone call. Um, I thought Daryl's done a really good job with two pretty difficult leads on the creative finance offers, both seller finance, sub two, kind of pitching both of those and, and just, Feeling them out, I thought both of the phone, phone conversations he had went really well. Um, I thought Scotty has had more dynamic moments. Um, the uh, "Are you a serious seller?" line was was amazing. Um, I I don't know if y'all could tell. I was jumping out of my seat when he said, "You sell me on why this is a good rental property," and they did it. Um, that stuff is sexual to me when people do that. So that was awesome. <laughs> Um, and then this last one, he just had, um, just so many great lines. <clears throat> First of all, the FaceTime, second of all, the credit score, the novation offer by pitching it as a FISBO, and then the, you bet your butt line. Um, so to me, it's been pretty close with two, two on good calls, but I think Scotty's got a, a pretty sizable lead right now, unless Daryl does something here on, on some calls going into the second hour. Daryl, you've had good phone conversations, but Scotty's just been more dynamic. So you got to do something here in the in the back half. Well, let's get it. He doesn't even sound phased one bit. All right, Daryl. I think down. he probably agrees. Your call has been forwarded to it. Hit him with the FaceTime. One up, yeah, Scotty. I need, some, I need some motivation, man. I think Daryl's in the same place that I was in when I was going against Aaron. I felt like Aaron was beating me, but it wasn't like anything I had done. It just, they weren't good conversations. <laughs> it's like, I, I need a good one. Like, give me something. And I'm getting all these Android users, man. Can't even FaceTime. <laughs> <laughs> I double dive, man. You go ahead. Sorry about that. Am I up or what? Yeah, yeah you're, you're up. up. Can we see you? Yeah. Um, in my oh shit, my bad guys. I meant to mute myself. Let's see. Um. All right.
This dude, Sam, I didn't know my words were a shirt material quite yet. Glad to know it, though. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and dial again. Announcement. <laughs> 708 this is ted harding by the way um 708 260. welcome to verizon wireless you're oh, weak all right daryl here's your moment i don't know man i feel like i feel like the numbers if the number was fake that would be a, that would have been like a refunded lead i feel like they should go to the next lead because it ain't it ain't even a number. I agree. It's like we dial up. percent. It's dial for dial, dial, Gene. It's dial for dial, buddy. <laughs> yeah, Gene coming here trying to change rules, man. No, no, no. Dial for dial, buddy. <laughs> Call on my guy Floyd. Devin says, from my data, more motivated sellers are Android. Hey, Doug. What's going on? This is Daryl. You doing good? How you doing today, man? All right. All right, cool. I just wanted to to give you a call about this property on Mockingbird. It kind of just came across my desk. Uh, didn't catch you at a bad time, did I? No, I'm good. Cool, cool. Um, this so this is one you're looking to sell. Um, I really have incomplete notes here. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a call and see if we were a good fit. Oh, okay. Got it. So, um. <clears throat> Catch me up to speed, man. I can't really see here. Is this property vacant? Is this one you're living in? You got tenants in here. No, I live in it. You live in it? Got it. So so you're looking to move to another to another location, another city, or are you staying in the same city? Another city. Another city. Man, what's got you leaving? What's got you leaving the city? Job. Oh, you got a new job? No, I've been working on the road for a few years. Mm-hmm. Been working on the road for a few years. Mm-hmm. Got it. Um. Okay. Yeah. I kind of just pulled this property up. Seems like uh, you don't have too many neighbors, huh? Uh, no, not a whole lot. Okay. Perfect. Um. <clears throat> so, I mean, what what it, catch me up, man? What have you tried to do so far to sell the property? I know you. Uh, I know you filled out our, our website. Um, is that all you've done, or have you reached out to like realtors or, or anything else like that? I have not reached out to any realtors. No. So just just going on sites, uh, you know, sell my house for cash. Mm-hmm. Got it. So I mean, how soon do you need to do you need to sell this and and move to and move out the city? I'm in no hurry. No hurry. Mm-hmm. Got it. <clears throat> So if I so what 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 are you looking to, to walk away with here? Um, I was looking to try to sell it for two twenty. For two twenty. Mm-hmm. And did a realtor give you that that offer that number or is that like like a Zillow number? Where where'd you come up with that? I just what we paid for it and then how the market's raised. Mm-hmm. Got it. I'm just, uh, I don't mind. I'm just looking up some properties in the area to see if anything is sold uh, in that range. Um, seems like like 220. That may be around. That's around market value. Um, so I mean, were you were you expecting somebody to buy this that's going to live in there, or were you looking to sell to like an investor? Somebody to live in. Got it. So I mean, a little bit about us. Um, I am an investor, right? But I do buy properties and I actually, you know, I buy them to provide affordable housing to the community. Um, so it is somebody that's going to live in there, but I have to come in at an investor price. Can you, can you tell me about a, a bit about the condition? Um, like the mechanicals, big ticket items, the roof, windows, uh, HVAC system. Have they been, been repaired and or replaced in the past like five, 10 years? We've been there for 13, and nothing's been replaced. Got it. So it's original. Um, well, I, it was replaced before we bought it. Mm-hmm. That was built in 1976. Okay. 
I mean, so if what happens if if nobody comes up to two twenty or I, I know you say you have to move for your job, what are you just gonna rent it out or something? What what's the plan? We'll advertise with the realtor. Perfect. <clears throat> Got it. So I mean, like I said, two twenty is it's pretty much market value. Um I would say I see properties selling. Like I just see this one right here um, on Front Street. This one sold for about eighty thousand uh, dollars in January. Um, are you familiar with that property? Uh, this is eighty nine yeah. Front Street. Yeah, it was a repossession. It was a repossession. Mm -hmm. Okay, got it. So it's probably sold like at auction. Was that the brick house? I actually can't even see it here. I'm, I'm looking on Zillow. Um, and I, I do see another one on Mockingbird Lane, uh, 222, that sold for 185. Um, that sold in, in 2020. So, yeah, I, I think. Yeah, but there was a, they traded like two cars and a tractor for it also. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you don't got no cars and a tractor to trade with this one, do you? No. Perfect. So it's just the house. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much, like I said, market value. Um, I mean, what what were you looking to do when you do sell this house? If somebody buys it, are you going to have to, you know, need some time to find somewhere to move, or do you already have that situated? Um, we have to find some place to move. So you need like like thirty, sixty days probably to to get your belongings yeah. out and everything. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, we can do that. Um, you know, we have done it in the past. Just asking because, um, you know, you just never know. Um. And next, you, you'll be using the funds from this property to, to buy your next house, I would assume? Correct, yeah. Okay, perfect. Yeah, man, um, not sure if we'll be the best fit. Um, I mean, what, what's got you, what's, what, what do you have against just listening with the realtor now and seeing what, what they can do? Not, not um, probably what we'll end up doing here yeah. before long. Yeah, typically, man, any any investor, they're going to come in and they're going to try. To, I'm sure you've got it. You know, you you posted your, your your property on these websites um, and I'm sure we're not the only site that you've posted it on. Um, where, where have the other investors been coming in at? You're the only one I've talked to. I'm the only investor you talk to? Yeah. Oh, wow. Nice. OK, I feel, I'm feeling lucky now, man. So um. <clears throat> Got it. So, I mean, most investors, we're, we're, we need an investor price, right? We're going to come in. We're going to primarily fix and flip a property. So, I mean, being that you said it, it, it's going to need some updating. Um, if I can't, if I, I can't, if I pay market value for the property, I wouldn't be that good of an investor, you know? Um, so, I mean, what's the, what's the lowest that you'll take? Yeah, right now, it'll be 220. 220, you're not budging? Yeah. Got it. Do you do you have a mortgage on this property? Yeah. Okay. What do you what do you owe? Um. There's a well. There's a lien on the mortgage too, so I have to uh, I have to pay it off. So. There's a lien on the mortgage. About one seventy. One seventy. So one seventy in total that you owe. Okay, so you're really looking to walk away with like 50, out of, 50 in your pocket. Correct. So even if you list with a realtor, right, you're going to have to, you know, on average, you'll probably spend, you know, 11% in, uh, in fees selling it, right? That's like another almost $24,000. So if you list with a realtor, you're, pre you're pretty much going to walk away with like $20,000. Um, is that, is that going to solve your problem? Yeah, whatever the realtor takes, and you know, my my cut will be two twenty, and we'll just mark it up from there. Right. So, yeah. So you you have about fifty thousand in equity. Um, the realtor take about six percent, and then you also have to pay closing costs. Um, and that, that's where I got that that twenty four thousand dollars in fees. Um, so I mean, what if I told you that I have a way that you can get you know that money in your pocket instead of having to spend $24,000 to, to spend it, give away half of your profit. What do you mean? 
Yeah, so um, there's situations where we actually specialize in this, right? There's a lot of times where where sellers, they have to sell for market value because they owe what they owe. They probably wouldn't walk away with with much, right? Or maybe have to come to the table with, with money, right? So I'm actually buying a property right now in Vernon, New Jersey. I'm going to turn it into an Airbnb. And um, the seller, his name is, is Jimmy, right? And Jimmy, he's been paying $500 out of his pocket for since 2008 right and this is a rental property for him something that's gonna supposed to you know bring in cash cash flow and he's losing money every single month right and jimmy has absolutely no equity he tried to list it on the market with the realtor and it just didn't work right so what i i told jimmy was why don't you just leave this mortgage in place i can pay you your equity right i can give you a, a down payment i could pay you your equity if you just let me continue to make these payments every single month on your behalf um so, I mean, if if you were open to doing something like that, I can get you your fifty thousand dollars in equity if you can let me, you know, continue to make these mortgage payments on your behalf. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. That's something I'd have to talk to the wife about. A hundred percent. Um, is she is she around? Maybe no, we can. She's 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 at the house. I'm I'm on the road working. Got it. What um what what do you do for work? I work in sales. You work in sales. Mm -hmm. Got it. So, um, <clears throat> Doug, yeah, I would I would love to maybe jump on a phone call with you and your wife, because um, in my experience and I'm not saying you'll do this, but have you ever played the game uh, telephone? No, it's, it's a kid's game, right, where you tell a secret to somebody. Everybody sits there in the line. You tell a secret to somebody. They pass that secret on to the next person and pass it on. By the time you get to the end of the of the line it's a completely different sentence than what you started from. Right? right. And I'm not saying that you'll do this, but like, I, I, t I talk about this every single day. It's almost like putting on a pair of pants for me. So I would love to jump on a phone call with you and your wife. Uh, what's your wife's name? Madonna. Madonna. I would love to jump on a phone call with you and Madonna and just explain how we can make this work and we can get you the most possible money for this property. So you don't have to, you know, split your whole profit with the realtor. Right. And I didn't even mention taxes. So um, that that 50,000 in equity that is, you know, drying up really fast if you if you sell it, you know, any other type of way. Yeah. Okay. OK, so um, let me ask you this. Like, I, I know you said you have to, to talk to your wife, but um, does it even make sense for us to jump on a follow up call? Does this does it seem like there's something that you would do? Well, I'll have to talk to her and then I'll. Say if it's something that she wants to, she wants to get in. Got it. So if she does say yes, right? If, if she says this is something that she would do, what what's the next step? <clears throat> then we uh, get back in touch with you and okay. See what you can do. Yeah, let's let's do it. Um, I mean, some some points you can just tell her. Um, and I would have to you know run some numbers myself. And I have to see if it's even a good fit for us as well. So when you go with her, right, um, think about, you know, how long would you would you hold this term for? How long would you allow me to keep this mortgage uh, mortgage going? Right. And I'll run some numbers and see if it makes sense for us. What let me ask you this. What what's your uh, your monthly mortgage payment? It's like sixteen hundred and fifty dollars. Sixteen fifty. That's with taxes and insurance. Okay, so sixteen fifty. You have any idea what I could what I could rent it out for? No, no, not a problem. I'll I'll run some numbers, um, and then we'll we'll see what we can do. So there's a few different ways we can do this, right? Um, I can a give you a down payment and make you monthly payments on your equity every single month. Um, now that down payment is is I, I I'm really making you the bank. Right. So I'm upgrading you to the bank. So I would ask you to think about, you know, what would you want for a down payment? What would you want for monthly payments? How long would you would you want this relationship to last? And then um, on my side, I have homework as well. I'll think about, you know, what makes sense for us and if, if it's even a deal. Right. And we can sure. jump on a follow up call and uh, and see if we can make something work. OK. All right, Doug, do you have any any questions for me? Got it. Hey man, you you don't sound too too excited about this. Is this is this something that you want to do? 
Uh, I'm just processing things. Okay. I would love to hear hear at least what you think about it, you know, before you talk to to your wife. Because again, it, it if I if it doesn't make sense to you and it doesn't make sense to for us to jump on a follow up call, I don't want to waste my time or yours. Yeah, I mean, just something I gotta not jump into right away. Just think about and and see. I hundred percent. I wouldn't want it any other way. The reality of things, like I said earlier, this is a long-term relationship, right? So if you're not 100% comfortable and on board, then I wouldn't even want to do a deal with you, right? Because I want I want both of us to be, you know, secure and and wanting to do this. Um, so yeah, man, uh, we we can jump on a follow-up call. Um, when when do you think is a good time for Madonna and you and myself to all jump on a call together? Um, I just have to check with her. So I'm not sure what her schedule is. Sounds good. Um, all right, man. Well, I will. Uh, I'll let you go. Um, again, just think about you know what would make sense for you for a down payment, monthly payments, um, and and the length of the of the relationship, and then uh, we can jump on another call. Um, I so I I'm a professional, right? And I will follow up with you probably before you follow up with me. So I will probably give you a call around like on Friday, maybe around this time. Does that work for you? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Sounds good, Doug. Well, I, I'll be looking forward to it, man. All right. See you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Yo, I think, I think we need to start upselling some fucking testosterone shots, man, for that guy. <laughs> yeah, that dude. I was trying to figure out if he was even interested or not. I think you did a good job at the end there of really trying to gauge the interest because I was feeling the same things you were. I was listening to what he was saying, his tonality. Everything about it was like red flag, red flag. But you went into it three or four times and then eventually it gets to a point where you ask it so much it just becomes offensive like I already right. told you. Right. And it's like I, th I think the only, the only way I would have done that differently is doing an accusation audit being like, hey, sometimes people do this, right? They want to let me down easily. But you're in sales. So you know what's going on. This Is, is this what's happening? That's the only way I think it maybe could have gotten a different answer from him, but I I, I think that point. the uh, the tail of the tape might be written there. Scotty, you're up, man. What's up, guys? All right, dude, it's dark here, and I'm seeing those beautiful trees outside your window. All this stuff, man. Yes, sir. All right. You get a winter emergency warning out here in Minnesota. <laughs> Got to come out to SoCal, man. I lived in uh, Carlsbad for a year. One of the greatest places on earth. All right, Scotty, board. this could very easily be your last call. I'd say I think that was probably Daryl's best call. I'm going to try calling him one more time. And that was Jerry Upchurch, by the way. I thought Daryl had some really good moments during that last call. I think it's funny because creative financing has become such a sexy topic that it's just commonplace for everyone to be like pitching yeah, sub two, sub five, novation. It's like this is this was not a thing like two, three years ago. Dude, Pace has taken over the game with all that. And it's like every every time I'm on a phone call with anyone, Daryl, you're up. Oh, it, baby. Anytime I'm on any live, I've got people in the comments saying, why didn't you sub two? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? <laughs> it's like, I don't know, because it was in Rudolph, Wisconsin, and I don't want to take a sub two down in Rudolph, Wisconsin. That's why I'm just doing this for content for you guys. 
I mean, I think a lot of people, they see us, you know, doing the closing, it's sexy, but they don't realize like, we got to make a deal happen on the back end. If we can't make a deal happen, right? Like that's somebody's real life we're playing with right there, right? This isn't like scripted. This is somebody's house. We're genuinely calling, trying to get a deal made with it. We get it under the contract or get their hopes up when we don't actually intend to do anything with it. I mean, like that's where you're kind of crossing a bridge of like messing with people's livelihoods. Um, to answer Nathan. Hey, Jeremy. You're absolutely <laughs> correct. He has spoken to two people, but he's had four answers. Call has been forwarded to us. He heard somebody. I think he heard you in the background, RJ. Hung oh, up don't blame it on me. <laughs> don't blame it on me. <laughs> Hung up, Bobby. Let me try him one more time. Triple dial. Yeah, there you go. Scotty's up. <clears throat> also, one of my favorite comments that I get on every live, RJ just wholesale that sub two in Rudolph, Wisconsin. <laughs> Pace ain't buying there. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going uh, Carlos Burns. Ooh. Man, nobody wants to talk to me. Your call has been forwarded. RJ. Yes, sir. I want to. How about, how about a couple of private stock leads for before we close out? One one for each one for these guys. Let's do it, bro. Jeans private stock. These are some uh, real treats. Like I, these are leads I, I want to see to some action here dollars. because uh, what so far what I've seen is two really good closers. Just they haven't really gotten a good lead. I mean, they, they haven't been bad leads. That was Carlos double dialed. Nothing. I mean, they've and, been, and you know what? And we do, and we usually do a thing before the show. We're like, "Hey, the show was on. The show was about to come on. So here's a promo code. Go and buy all the leads because they're gonna sweep them. So we do that before every show. We try to fucking, we try to keep the show. We try to keep like show with the crappiest leads. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> frankly, but here, here we go. I'm, I'm how many of the leads sold? How many of the leads sold before the uh, before the stream today? Remember the number Fucking you gave a, me. Two hundred fifty. <laughs> so Daryl, look in the private chat. Gene's gonna drop a lead in the private chat for you, and then Scotty he'll drop one in there for oh, you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I like that better because I'm like like trying to read these leads. Yeah. Or- so this one this one is fair condition. Roof needs replacement. Needs paint inside and outside. They want to sell ASAP. There's no mortgage. So, These are the type of leads that if you wanted to buy them yourself, it would be a couple hundred bucks. These are the money leads. And I got the next one coming up. Nathan, building rapport is so key because, I mean, everybody knows, right? You can have the greatest closer of all time. RJ can be here talking to anybody. Hey, John. Hey, how you doing, man? This is Daryl. Hey, I, I probably caught you at a bad time, man. Good, good. Hey, I just wanted to give you a call, man. Your lead at your uh, property actually just slid across my desk. Um, is it you're still looking to sell this property on Daly Street, right? Yeah. Perfect, man. Um, so I just wanted to give you a call. Uh, my notes are like really incomplete here. Um, so I just had to ask a couple questions, confirm some of the notes I have, um, ask a few questions of my own, and see if we're a good fit. Is that cool? Sure. Perfect, man. So, John, um, I can't see here. Is this a property you're living in? Is this a, a rental property or, or is this vacant? Uh, no, it's uh, operating in the house. You said somebody's operating in the house? Uh, yeah. Like living there or, or just like there from yeah. time to time? Uh, yeah. Uh, 
I'm living in the house. Oh, you're living in it. Okay, nice. So, I mean, if you if you sell this today, um, how long would you need to to find a new place to move? Uh, a couple weeks. Couple weeks. Um, yeah, two or three weeks, probably. Okay. I have, have to get my stuff out of it. Yeah, just not nah, just asking because I'm actually buying a property in Maryland right now where um Tammy's my seller and she needs like 60 days to get out. So just making sure that um you know we're on the same page here. I I'm never looking to just you know put somebody out on the street. Um so yeah. if you need time, then we can give you time. Um yeah. so I mean tell me about the property. Is it tell me about the condition, man? You say it, it could be a five bedroom house? Yes. What what do you mean by that? Uh well it's got uh like one little uh it's got one room that uh I use for storage and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh it's got a bedroom that I use for storage and stuff. Okay. But it, it could be uh two bedrooms and one bedroom also. Got it. Um it's, it's just smaller than the rest of the rooms that's mm-hmm. in the house. Okay, and does it have like a closet and windows in that room? Uh, no, it has a window. Okay, got it. How long? How long you been living here, Don? Uh, probably about thirteen years. Man, it's a long time. What what's got you moving after thirteen years? Uh, just more relocate. Got it. You staying? You staying in Bruton? Yeah. Yeah. So, do you already have that place, like the new house, picked out? Um, already. No, not yet. Okay. And are you gonna you gonna rent or are you gonna be buying a new home? Uh, I'm still looking. Okay. So I I would assume the money that you get from selling this house is gonna go straight towards that. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Um. Hey, do you do you owe anything on this property? Any mortgage or anything? No, it's paid for. Got it. That's, it's nice, man. Free and clear. It's, it's the way to go. Um, perfect. So, did you? I, I would assume you had an idea what you were looking to walk away with. Uh, at least forty. Forty thousand dollars. Yeah. Got it. Uh, it uh, the property is worth uh seventy. The property's worth seventy. Did Did your realtor tell you that? So the people you bought it from, you bought it from, told you that it's worth seventy thousand. Yeah, got it, man. What um has has anybody else gave you a call and and tried to offer you what what were they what were their numbers looking like? Uh, I haven't heard any uh, calls on it yet. Perfect. So I'm the first person you're talking to, huh? Uh, yeah. Got it, I John. Really, I haven't really advertised. Mm-hmm. So man, I, I I'm not seeing much activity in this in this area. Um, I mean, I see one house that sold for for twenty thousand uh, earlier last year on VC VAC. Um, another one on daily sold for twenty three thousand. Um, I mean that and that it needed some work. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get forty thousand dollars approved. What what happens if somebody doesn't? Pay you forty thousand dollars. What what's the plan? I'll just keep. You'll just keep it. You'll keep. You'll stay living there. Yeah. Got it. Hmm. This is this is tough, man. Um. I I would have to to run this past my underwriter and see if we can get forty thousand approved. Um. But let me ask you this, and, and it's gonna take like like two minutes. He's in the other room over here. Um, now if he tells me that the most he can pay is like $20,000, are you going to tell me to kick rocks? Yeah. Perfect. Um, 
Give me one second. Give me one second. Put you on mute and see uh, see what we can get approved there. All right. All righty. Bro, $40,000. He is tripping. There's no way. <laughs> is he bluffing or what, man? You hear this, man, dude? Oh shit! I hung up. <laughs> what was he hey, saying? Maybe that's maybe that's good. He said he said you can kiss my ass for twenty thousand. <laughs> how you make how you make money? Hey John, sorry about that, man. I didn't mean to hang up. Um, yeah, I, I just got that that number back from my. Uh, from my underwriter, it it doesn't seem like we'll be a good fit, man. Um, did you did you just try to just, why don't you just try to just list this with the realtor? Uh, no, I'd rather not do that uh, because they won't they won't pretty much uh, to uh, mess with. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, the it, 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 it's no sweat, man. You know. Yeah, no, no, I know it's no sweat. I just, I'm, you know, my thing is. It's paid for and everything, so, you know, it's mine. Yeah, no, my, my whole thing is, man, I'm a problem solver, right? So usually when somebody submits a, submits a property through our website, it's because they have a problem that they want us to solve, right? And I'm always, like, that's, that's my issue. I'm always trying to solve problems, even if they're, if it's not a good fit for us. So, um. Yeah. I, I do kind of like I do kind of feel bad, right? So I mean, like what what's the plan? Like, cause we we I I tell you my my underwriter he told me the the most we could pay is he and he wrote it down to the T, right? It's twenty two thousand four hundred seventy five dollars. Um, and I I don't think that 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 would make too much sense for you, huh? Got it. <clears throat> Yeah, um, it doesn't seem like like we'll be a good fit, man. The only other way that that I'll be able to to come up to forty thousand is if you let me pay some now and some later. No, I can't do that. Yeah, I didn't I didn't think so because you need to use the money to buy to buy your new house, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, all right, man. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem like like we'll be a great fit. So, um, you have you have a good one. I appreciate you calling in with everybody. Yeah, I appreciate you, John. All right, yeah, we go. All right you too. Bye-bye. Forty thousand dollars, man. No deal. Wah, wah, wah. That's one that I see as a follow-up game. He's got unrealistic expectations. No yeah. matter what, what he tries, think it's he... not gonna work. Colin. Scotty, that lead came in today. Jesse Lee, you have two properties on. Hey, how you doing? Hey, what's up, brother? This is Scott Barrens. How's it going? Hi, good. I'm with Balsama Home Investments. How you doing today? All right, how are you doing? Good, good. I think you were on one of our websites, cashofferoption.com, looking to maybe get a cash offer. What's up? So you live in this property, investment property? Give me the scoop. Uh, no, it's a property I bought a while back. Uh, uh, fix it up. Uh, about 90 percent uh complete on it and i uh, just decided to put it on the market it's so it's, it's, vacant, it's a vacant property right is it is it listed right now on the open market or you just mean you're trying to get some offers for it it's just trying to get some offers for it okay um and you said you fixed it up what exactly did you do to the property uh, put a roof on it uh, we uh, painted and repaired the in interior walls uh we did the cabinets uh, we did the softened fascia boards, uh, broken face to broken windows, and uh, there were some rotten fascia boards, replaced the fascia boards, and, and that sort of thing. Okay. It's on a, it's on a concrete floor. So. Oh, okay. Is it is it ready to live in right now? Could I move my family in tomorrow, or what do I have to do in order to No, that's oh, a rest in peace. Oh, what the fuck happened there? And he crashed out. 
He's completely out. All right, you know what? Beatbox battle between RJ and Gene. Go. <laughs> what the fuck? Gene, you've got your background music what, going what are, on. What are we beating and who are we boxing? No, no. I mean, all for you, you're doing both. He'll be back. He'll be back. I as long as he knows he's off. I can only beat one thing, and it's it's a it's, it's a it's a, okay. cl it's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is like during the closers Olympics. This happened to me. That I was so focused on the phone call that I didn't realize I was off the feed for four minutes. <laughs> and I looked up and I was like, oh my, oh my God. <laughs> and I came back and I was like, Here we you hear me? Yes, Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. My, my, I couldn't hear you for a second. Um, so give me, just give me one second. Give me one second. I'm getting back situated. Um, can you just bear with me for one minute, Booker? Okay. What's wrong? We're good. You're good. You're oh, good. we're good. Yep. Whoa. Oh, Booger, sorry about that, brother. Okay. Um. So, what could it rent for? Uh, Nine hundred per month. Nine hundred per month. Okay. And do you know that because uh, you know you've seen properties for rent nearby, or do you have other properties that? Properties in the area going anywhere from eight hundred to a thousand a month. Okay. And also, uh, I think Zillow got it. This is what does Zillow say? Eight fifty per month. Oh, okay. So you think you could kind of push the envelope a little bit and get eight nine hundred a month out of it? Right. You know Zillow be crazy with those values sometimes, though, right? Right. Right. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think is going to make you happy? I mean, how much did you put into the property? You said you fixed it up over the last couple of years. What do you need to get out of it in order to be happy about it, Booker? Fifty-one thousand. That's very uh, specific. <laughs> how did you come up with that number? I mean, I, I appreciate it. I, how... you know, bro, I mean, do, do the uh, math and, and just get back with it. Whoa, 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 one second. I, I am I am interested, Booker. I'm just, I will do my math. Seriously, I'm a serious buyer. So if you're looking to sell it, you know, you got a serious buyer on the, on the hook. I'm just trying to understand how you came up with the 51. That's all. Uh, that's what the, I was in the area of selling for 75 and 80. Oh, is that right? That's all. So I'm on the low end. Okay. Uh, you, you can get back with me. You know? How many bedrooms and bathrooms are the house, Booker? Three, be three bedrooms, one bath. And everything is ready, remodeled, ready to go. You want fifty-one for it, and I could put nine. I could get a renter in there for ninety. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Nine hundred. Okay. Well, I I am looking. I mean, I'm pretty quick on doing my homework. I'm looking right now. I see that there's one that sold uh, for forty-five, thirty-three, fourteen, Sweetbriar Road. Uh, right down the street from you, sold for 45. You got another one that sold for 37 on 529 Southgate Avenue. I don't think 50, 51 is out of question if you are really in that good of shape that, you, uh, that you're telling me. Um, how much money do you think? Because my goal is just to put a renter in there. You see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to figure out what's, what's going to be my all in to get that renter in there. It's going to be 51 to you. How much more to get it rent ready? Do you have anybody that'll do that work? Yeah. You do? Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm asking because maybe you could refer them to me. Okay. Yeah, I can. What What do we got to do? I mean, if 51 is the number, I mean, you, are you going to, you know, are you ready to rock and roll right now or, or talk to me? When do you want to sell it? I'm ready to rock and roll now. Okay. So do you want me to send you over a contract? What's your email address? I'm an end buyer. I'm going to keep it as a rental. And uh, so, so yeah, no. And, and by the way, if you know about those wholesale contracts, do you, if you ever have anybody that is looking to sell a property, you can refer them to me. You know, I don't, I don't do much wholesaling. I do some sometimes, but, uh, but on a property like this, if you're telling me I can get a $900 a month renter in there and it's only going to cost me 5,000, I'll take that with a grain of salt. I'll figure that's, 10,000. Um, so, you know, 51 plus 10, 61, get a renter in there for 900. That sounds like a good deal to me. How's the area? Is it a good, is it a good, decent? Uh, I need tools over there. Okay. I need tools over there for the last three years. I just, I just need to 
I tore out a bunch of stuff. Got to get the yard cleaned up. But okay, are you gonna are you gonna do that for me? It, right, it's on a cul de sac. Uh, a lot of retired base workers over there. Yeah, I mean, I'm doing a street view. It's a nice tree lined street. Looks like you're the last house on a cul de sac. I don't know when this picture was taken, but it looks like there's like a purple exterior, and it appears to be a brick house, which is great for a rental. You're on a nice piece of land. Talk to me. So I painted it. I painted it gray. He has a red door. I removed a lot of the vegetation that was in the front yard. You got any? You got any pictures you can send over to me while we're on the phone? Uh, not right now. I'm kind of headed headed out. Oh, okay. I didn't I didn't catch you at a good time or what? Yeah, I was headed to a meeting, but. If you could, can I call you in the morning or call me when you're in California? I'm in California, but I buy nationwide. And if you want the truth, man, I'm looking for properties just like this. You know, under 1,500 square feet, low maintenance, brick houses, single story that I can get a decent uh, return on my money with, a, you know, as a rental. Um, so as long as you're telling me, you know, as long as I'm hearing what you're telling me and that is accurate, which is you want 51 for the property. I need to put about five to 10 into it and I can rent it for 850, 900. If that all adds up and the property is in as good of shape as you're telling me, and it's never been lived in before. Right. I mean, I might be able to come pretty darn close to 51, man. Yeah. What do you think about that? Well, I hope you can come to 51. <laughs> if I, if I pay like 50, uh, you know, and we split the closing costs, you know, I'm going to be all in probably a little over 51, maybe closer to 52. So is that, you know, I'm, I'm ready to write you a contract, man. If you send me pictures and it looks as good as you're telling me, I'm ready to send you a contract right now, you know, for 50,000. First thing, first thing I want to get some better pictures of what I had. Uh, and then I can email or take you can send me an email address okay and then just so you know if we get into contract on this and we move forward the next step is i'm just gonna i'm gonna have someone on my team stop by you know just because i i never actually buy sight unseen everything sounds good from this conversation but i hope you understand that i actually need to put eyes on the property is that cool uh, I understand that, yes. okay so next step after we talk tomorrow you send me the pictures we get back on the line and uh, we'll figure out when I can have my guy stop by. Well, I'll send you a contract first. Make sure that everything's good. There's not going to be any verbiage with regards to wholesale. I can assure you that I am the end buyer. I'm going to be the one buying the property with my funds. Okay? Okay. You got it? Yes, sir. We cool? We cool. You got any questions for me? No questions, no. Sir. All right. Do me a favor, brother. Can you save my number, Scott, home buyer? And I'm going to call you tomorrow. But I'm, I'm going to send you a text right now with my business card, though. Okay? Thank you. All right, brother. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bam. That sounds like it's going to be a deal. 900 rent. What city is that in? Is it Detroit? That one is actually in Albany, Georgia, and there's comps up to 100K within a half mile. So, yeah, you got 2901 Barnaby Drive that just sold for 100K, 2914 Barnaby Drive. I didn't deep dive these comps, obviously, so they could not be full comps, but they're 0 0.1 miles away selling for 100K. Looks like that might be vacant land, actually. We got one 81,538 Southgate Avenue sold for 81,000. Either way, man, almost a 2% rental on a brick house in a decent area, I think. That's a, a one story. Day. Yeah, single story. And if anyone's wondering why is this lead like different than all the other leads, this was just the lead that I grabbed. It was like fresh lead. If I didn't grab it, it would have gotten sold out because it's like all the factors in there are super motivated. I just grabbed it for the show and I called yeah. the Jeans Private Stock. Solid lead. <laughs> I will be following up with them. I'm already engaged in a nice text conversation uh, with the, the lovely lady I FaceTime with. So that should be good. So solid. Thanks for the leads, guys. <laughs> No doubt. All right, I think that's uh, I think that's it. We're at the two hour mark, so now we are. Um, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed here. I, Scotty, I, I wanted you to get that one, man. You, you had it. I did have it. I'm going to have it. I don't. I know you're gonna have it. I, I get I'm it. I'm going to. 
I'm going to have it tomorrow or the next day. I have the report that guy, even if you call him right now, he likes me better. hundred percent. I'm, I'm getting that the thing. Too. You had him. He's not going to sign right now, bro. And I've never been the guy to make someone sign on a phone call unless they're like you talked him out of it. I felt like you, you were kind of like, yeah, I mean. Because I don't I, care. I don't... Because I don't care. I know that he's going to answer my call tomorrow. I know he's going to send me pictures. And I know that that's going to be a deal. For sure. What if I called him and I offered him 55? Yeah, I mean, there you go. Then tomorrow <laughs> sounds like I'm paying 55. <laughs> <laughs> right? He likes that. you. He yeah. doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't like you four well, grand more than that. Uh... The fucking wholesaler that he talked to. He needs to. He needs to be careful of those cash buyers that are going to tell you one thing just to get you to sign. Then after the inspection, they're going to say, "Hey, man, I need 10k. You didn't tell me X, Y, and Z." So don't worry. I got, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be able to uh, <laughs> overcome that objection. But I feel you. Yes, RJ. I, I could have yeah. gone for the kill. That's just not my style, bro. All right, so here's here's what I've got. You each place nine phone calls, okay? So we called 18 of the 29 leads. Um, Scotty, you talked to one, two, three, four, five. So you talked to five of the nine. Daryl, you talked to one, two, three, four of the nine, okay? Um, I thought Scotty had... Three of his five conversations were, were good. I thought Daryl, three of his four conversations were good. Um, I thought all of Daryl's conversations were good except for the last one. I thought the last one, I I just I wasn't wasn't feeling the vibe there. Um I, I think it was because it was a bad lead. It was you know, one forty thousand, probably the ARV was like twenty and I, I just felt like you weren't vibing with it. You, you just yeah. felt like you were uninterested, like, ah, man, this sucks. And I think you kind of also knew it was your last one. Um, I thought your seventh phone call that you had, you talked sub two. Um, when he said, I just got to talk to my wife, you said, is the wife around? I love that you pushed there. Um, I thought your analogy with the telephone game, that was probably one of your better moments of the entire two hours. Um, I thought you did something to, to me that really stood out because I see people misuse this very frequently, which was, you said, what's the next step, but you said it at the appropriate time where I've seen other people do it, where they're like, what's the next step? And it makes them sound like a dumbass. And it's like, what do you mean? You're, <laughs> you're the person that's supposed to know why are you <laughs> asking that right now? You used it appropriately. Thought that was good. Um, I liked how you used the seller fi on the sub two for the 50 K that you'd be bringing down. Um, I like how you kind of explained that. Um, but then there was a couple of awkward moments in that call. And I, I wrote down at the end, that's a very hard call to judge. I felt like that phone call was your moment that you could have stolen this from Scotty. Um, Scotty, I, I ultimately, I have you winning. Um, I, I, I really liked your third call, the one where you, you asked him, are you a serious seller? Um, you told him to sell me. Um, you sold me at that moment. I, I knew at that moment, Daryl's got to do something to take it away. Um, I thought he had a chance in that seventh phone call, but it just didn't work out. Uh, the FaceTime with the, the elderly lady was great. The credit score, the novation. Um, you bet your butt. I loved all those. I just ultimately, from a from a closer standpoint, like a killer instinct, ninth phone call, private lead. You had him on the price. I get it. It's not your style, but competition wise, Bubba, you should have laid the hammer down and been like, "Let's get this shit signed." Uh, but ultimately, Scotty, I was thoroughly, imp I was impressed with both of you guys. Without knowing who y'all are and just having two random guys that were talking some shit on IG, <laughs> thank God y'all came in here and did not make this just look awful, okay? You guys did great, uh, but congratulations, Scotty. Uh, I have you winning, and uh, you'll, you'll get to face me here in the near future. Let's go. I want everybody who's yeah, listening Scotty. at home right now to, uh, to pound their desks. Wake up their spouses, whoever. Yeah. Just give it, you know, a big at-home round of applause for Scotty tonight. Yes. Yes. Let's go.
Hey, uh, Daryl, I, I will say to you, um, congratulations for representing the sub two family very well. I saw a lot of what Pace teaches, uh, your storytelling ability. That, the, like, just my personal feedback to you, um, if you care to hear it, is uh, I felt that sometimes in the conversations, there were moments where I could feel you were uncomfortable. You got real comfortable when you started storytelling. And it yes. was like you were a whole 100%. different person. Like, yeah. you were, like, super comfortable and, like, well, Jimmy over here in New Jersey, when blah, 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 it was Tammy. like, oh, who is this Tammy. dude? Like, I want that there all, <laughs> right. all the time. And that's when I think you'll elevate to a whole nother level because you were just – your storytelling was uh, incredible. So, obviously, that's from role-playing with Sub 2 or just what you feel more comfortable in, but that was an excellent part of your closing. Uh, Daryl, I think – I think the best thing that you can add into your repertoire is going to be both facial expressions and body language, right? Yeah. When you're going to animate yourself while being able to, you know, be sitting there on the phone, when you pair that with storytelling, there's nothing that can compete with that, right? For I sure. think uniquely, that's what Scotty did so good. I mean, you saw him like, at one point I saw him kick his legs up onto his windowsill and he was just chilling there FaceTiming this lady, right? Like, it's just your, your body language, the way that you're physically holding yourself, it comes through so, so strong. I think that combined with storytelling, it's just such a, I mean, it's, it's a fantastic skill set to be able to uh, dip into. I mean, it, it, it's, it's limitless to where you can use it. I appreciate that. I definitely appreciate the feedback. Shit. Honestly, I wanted my eyes to, and not because like Scott, I think Scotty did a bad job. Scotty, you did great. Like the way I really think that I won is because, this is my first year in real estate. Like I didn't know what wholesaling was last year. So just being here and just being on the stage and getting this feedback, it's a win either way. So congrats, Scotty. I, I appreciate this. Appreciate it, RJ. Appreciate it, Liam. Beast, bro, for real. I didn't realize that you were only in the industry for one year, but you are truly a beast. Like, right, you too, bro. You too, bro. I appreciate it, yeah, man. I'm glad that we got connected. If anything else, like, thank you for giving us a platform to – now I'm connected with Daryl. You know, that's that's sure. badass. So I appreciate right. it, man, for real. Scotty, how long have you how, how long you been doing this? I've been doing this for just about two years. I was part-time up until June of last year and then quit my uh, full-time job to, to go full-time. Now we're sitting here in my office, man. Dreams do come true. Yes, well, sir. I'll, I'll just say, I mean – I still feel like I'm relatively new in this and I'm starting to realize like I'm, I'm definitely one of the older <laughs> veterans in this industry. The more I talk to you guys watching that, I mean, well, a year and two years, but really just a couple, you know, not even a year full time. I mean, that's uh that's very impressive by both of you guys. Y'all that I talked about it during the live. I mean, y'all both were very comfortable explaining sub to seller finance. Uh, you know, Scotty, you, you broke down the novation. Um, and, and I think you'll probably get a call back on that novation and you'll probably end up getting it. Um, so you'll probably end up with two deals out of this um, session, which was, you know, amazing. Um, I, I felt like. Hey, send me some money when you do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. By the way, there is, there is an agreement there, but um, you guys did great. And uh, I, I thought you represented um, the show uh, very well and uh, showcased what the speed to lead leads look like. Um, you know, I saw some people, they were saying, so what, we didn't get any good leads. Um, no, there were good leads. Um, it just wasn't some of the, the lay downs that I've had in the past couple of weeks. Um, but there's still going to be two deals out of this and, and who knows what happens from callbacks, yep. you know, I mean, I've had a couple of those where after I got off the air, somebody called me and it was a good lead. So, uh, I thought you guys did an excellent job. One lesson I learned in real estate, the leads don't suck, you suck. <laughs> so right. don't I ever blame that. the leads. Yeah. Don't ever blame the leads. All right. So uh, I guess the, the only thing that we have to figure out here, Scotty, is when you and I are going to go uh, Let's head go, to head. Baby, anytime. Let's so, go right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here's the deal. I'm going to be going against Nick Louivano. Mm -hmm. Um and at the end of January, I'm going to I'm going to be on vacation next week. Um, so we'll probably have you early February when me and you will go against. My other. birthday is February 11th, man. It's going to be an early birthday present to kick your ass. My All man. right. There you go. I love the confidence. I love the confidence. And the problem is you actually have to get a signed contract to beat me, though. OK, then I will. Yeah. Adapt and overcome. 
N you, none of this, uh, to, none I'm, of this. We'll do it tomorrow. Business that don't beat me. <laughs> I'll, I'll it won't. RJ will call that person. I mean, RJ is the most aggressive person on the phone. I know he's gonna call my like, boy right now. I'm gonna CC no. him on my docu sign. Let's see. What's them. cute about y'all is, is y'all would have called him and offered him 55. I'd call and lock him up at 45. It's true, and I still might. I'm a dirty dog. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Liam, you do you have stuff to sign off? Do you need us anymore? I don't think I need you guys anymore. It's been uh, it's been so lovely having all you guys here in my speed lead shirt. We got Gene. It's like five a.m. for him, something something like that. Dude's just a trooper over there. He's always here. RJ, thank you for cutting this time out of your day. So many yes. days a week now. I mean, we're just having you being a regular face on here, I and know, I think right? people love it. People love it. I'm looking at the statistics, man, and your YouTube channel is pulling more than ours is. So, uh, <laughs> don't go away. <laughs> Love you guys. See y'all. See you, RJ. <laughs> Scotty, Daryl, thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. Um, I think just things that we're going to part with here are we are going to be live tomorrow. RJ is going to be doing his standard, just dialing through the sheet, getting some deals signed, and then I'll be rocking and rolling on Friday. So if you guys want to tune in, see some experts close some deals, tune in again and again. Make sure you guys are subscribed. Other than that, we'll keep it real simple with a little ad. -ball. See you guys. Pay-per-click advertising into your real estate business? iSpeedTheLead.com is an a la carte PPC marketplace, allowing investors to get into the world of PPC on a budget. Browse and purchase PPC leads a la carte from all around the United States. These leads are from motivated sellers who want to sell now. So if you want to find motivated sellers using PPC, go to iSpeedTheLead.com. We got you.